I'm Nahla Hwala. I am uh, the I am a professor of human nutrition, mm -hmm. and uh, I am the dean of the Faculty of Agriculture and Food Sciences. As a professor of nutrition uh, and as a dean of the faculty, as a dean of the faculty, uh, I looked at this uh, school, and I saw that this school is uniquely positioned to address this global issue. Food security since 2008 is a global and a regional issue. So we were all concerned in different disciplines, how do we address it? And having all the ingredients in one uh, faculty was a great opportunity to really have this as one of our global themes. Our, our uh, faculty is concerned now and we chose what we will be focusing on strategically is healthy people, healthy earth and healthy food. So we have all the ingredients and this is how I got in, into food security. Now if you look at food security, just to define it further, if you look at food security you will see that why do we have still food insecurity if we eat well and if we produce enough. Um, people were addressing the issue of food security which means, in a, in a way, to say that let us produce more. So we produced more and there was a lot of food available. And the amount of food available worldwide is more than what the, the, the people need. So, what we, so what's wrong? Mm -hmm. What is wrong was that this food produced was not accessible to the people. Either it was more expensive or far away or not available around them. Now suppose they eat it, those people eat this food. Is it safe? Is it adequately prepared? Is it adequately processed? So this is the next step. So what they were getting, was it good for their health? Now eventually, at the end, you want to have people that are eating food that is nutritionally healthy for their well-being. So, Starting from production, ending with the consumption, it was important to address food security along all this value chain or food system. The nutritionists were telling people, eat this, it's good for you, eat that, it's good for you. Was the behavior changed? Very little. The production was being increased. Did it reach the people? And was it healthy for the people? Uh, it's doubtful. So what, was, um, what, what we have um, ventured into is really address, addressing food security in its integrated manner, mm -hmm. where the food consumption and the food production both are addressed at the same time, and by a group of scientists in the school who are well positioned to do so in their respective fields. Um, being a nutritionist, of course, my area of focus is really to have people eat healthy food. And in order to do so, it wasn't enough that we produce food-based dietary guidelines, we produce uh, uh, recommendations, uh, we tell people on TV, in books, in papers, this is what you should eat. It wasn't enough. The environment needed to be changed. So in my uh, area of focus is that I would like that people, I would like to, them to implement what, food what uh, nutrition security is, to be nutritionally secure. And this I could see that cannot be, cannot happen, cannot be implemented without addressing the whole food system from food security to consumption. Other people might take it from the agriculture side. I would like the people taking it from the agriculture side to focus on nutrition sensitive agriculture. So when they produce and then when they modify the seeds and so on, to have in their mind that nutrition, is this nutritionally adequate or not. Okay. And of course, maybe I, I missed something about the, the diet when we say healthy. At the same time, the, the food security is really concerned with the environment. <coughs> So we have been treating the environment as if it's going to be there forever. Now we know that this environment is being 
uh, devastated by our practices. So we would like to produce uh, in a way that is good for the environment. And we would like to eat and consume foods that are healthy, but at the same time that are good for the environment. Well, this region is the one that is going to suffer most from food insecurity. This is uh, the figures t tell us that we cannot produce enough food for our, our people. And also this region has uh, the lowest water per capita. So we don't have enough water for agricultural production and for the people per se. So the practices really should be addressed in, the, in this region more than anywhere else because the resources are limited, the land, the water, and, um, and many other aspects in the global warming that is coming to us also. Um, you will tell me why should people eat healthy? Um, what happened over the years is that people went into unquestioned hab habits of, of uh, food consumption. If we look and analyze that food consumption, we will find that uh, the, these countries are suffering from diseases of undernutrition and overnutrition because of the habits that this is directly related to their habits. We see increased consumption of uh, harmful food and we, we see l uh, low consumption of good foods. So what is in this region? We have undernutrition. We have non-communicable diseases, meaning obesity, cancer, and diabetes. I mean, there are four countries in this region that are among the top 10 in the world in diabetes. So we suffer from these diseases. We suffer from undernutrition. At the same time, we suffer from micronutrient de deficiencies. So we have a triple burden of disease. And this triple bur burden is associated with the food consumption habits that we have. And these food consumption habits cannot change unless we address the whole issue of the food system from production to consumption. If you look at the MENA region, the policies for food security is go and find places to produce and rent land and um, you know, land grabbing and all of these terminology that was used. The, the issue is that the disciplines under food security are segmented into different um, categories and everyone is working alone. What we are trying to do here is that to address this food security in, an, in a holistic manner. So the only way to do it is to, uh, to uh, allow for the capacity building that, for the people that would be the agents of change in their look and in their addressing of the problem of food security. If we continue like this, I've been in an FAO meetings, I've been in many meetings, they all start with saying, how can we increase production? Why? Because it is the people that come to, to those meetings and those policy makers, they are always thinking, I want to produce more. Availability is extremely important. You want to eat, the first thing, the food has to be available. The next thing is that you should afford it. The third thing, it should be safe and, and uh, nutritionally adequate. So basically, we are looking into the master's program to graduate those agents of change in the society where they would look at food security in an integrative and a holistic manner. At the same time, we have implemented a diploma. We thought this diploma would uh, train people who are already in their uh, respective uh, ministries or, uh, or policy makers and, and so on, who, who would be exposed to the integrative and the holistic aspect of food security. So the diploma is short. It is for professionals mostly, and it is of advanced level. So policy makers who are decision makers in their countries, in the region and in Lebanon should be and uh, should really have this kind of training in order to be able to address food security. If this doesn't happen, we will continue having food insecurity for many years to come.
first of all, we need to get them interested. <laughs> I, I think it's our duty to uh, really encourage students to, to study it. Even if I'm an agriculture, let's say I'm an agriculture student, I'm interested in production. Why should I study food security? I'm in this particular discipline. It's because he has to address agriculture from a food security perspective, not just from production, no matter what happens to the environment, no matter what, if this is healthy or unhealthy, if this is, uh, if this is good for the people or not. So they have to work in their particular narrow area of discipline with the holistic approach to food security. So I will tell everyone who's studying agribusiness, who's studying agroeconomics, who's studying agriculture, and who's studying nutrition, that knowledge in food security is a must. And I hope that all these programs will have this food security component in their programs. Okay. Now for people, for us, for example, I've been working in nutrition all the time. I mean, what, is, what did I give back to the society? Is food-based dietary gui guidelines that are healthy? Did I look if these food-based dietary guidelines are good for the environment? Did I look if those items that I am proposing to the people are available? No. So basically, if I really want the people to eat healthy, I should really address all of these issues. And then I can achieve my goal, which is having healthy people eating healthy diets. If I don't do this, then I have failed in uh, fulfilling the mission of the nutrition uh, discipline. Now this university prides itself of graduating leaders and leaders in their own discipline. Now in food security we would expect that those people will be leading uh, their, their countries or our country in addressing food security. They are much better positioned to do this kind of work more than anyone who is an agriculture specialist, nutrition specialist, agribusiness specialist. So I urge the students to go beyond the narrow area of their technical expertise and have a holistic look at the issue of food security and take lead positions in our government, in our NGOs, in our uh, non-governmental organization and at the UN uh, agencies in order to be the leaders of change in the world. Well, I'll go back and say AUB is a university of firsts. It's a leading academic institution. And in that particular aspect, it's also leading in this region. It is the only available academic program, whether the diploma or a master's in food security. And it is in the Faculty of Agriculture that has always been labeled as a faculty of firsts. So um, it is the only one. Now, if you think globally, you will see that we in the region should put more emphasis on food security than other places where you would see that you would say, why, why isn't the US and other countries or Europe are very much concerned? Because they have a lot of resources, they have the land, they have the water. And therefore, this issue is not pressing for them. So it is us in the MENA region that should lead in that direction. <laughs>